Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in an unexplored region of the planet Mars, trying to rescue a girl scientist held captive by Baccarati. They're behind that mound of rocks, Happy. I hope Baccarati doesn't see us until we're close enough to rush them. Yeah, with a girl there, we don't dare fire. I wonder who piled those stones up like that, sir. It's very strange, Half. I didn't think there was anything like this on Mars. Yeah, it looks like it deserved Happy to see us. Smoke on rockets, we're right out in the open, and Baccarati's using a blast. <laughs> Today's thrilling adventure of Space Patrol. Reports that Zoltan Baccarati, twin brother of the original Prince Baccarati, has been seen in Lowell City, have brought Commander Corey and Cadet Happy to the planet Mars. Right now, in Space Patrol headquarters in Lowell City, Buzz has just talked to one of the agents who thought he saw Baccarati. Now, Cadet Happy enters with a handful of spacegrams. Commander, wasn't that Lieutenant Norton that just left? Yes, Happy. It's certain you saw Baccarati in the city. Norton took gas him, but the man disappeared in the crowd. Mm, some nerve. I mean, if it was Baccarati. Anything important in those bulletins? Oh, no, sir. Just copies of routine orders. Except this one. Not official, exactly. It was sent up through channels. Who's it from? Uh, Dr. Loring. 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 What's it about? I'll read it, sir. It says, respectfully request help of Space Patrol in locating spaceship known as the Black Star, lost on Mars with 20 men and women aboard. Yeah, when was that uh, message sent? Well, I see. It was transmitted from Terra at 0830 hours. But that was a relay from... Well, from Lowell City. It was originally sent here two days ago, before we arrived. Two days ago? A spaceship of 20 people aboard is lost, and it takes two days for the message to get through. Read the rest of it, Hap. Yes, sir. The Black Star blasted off from planet Earth 870 years ago and crashed on Mars. 870 years ago? Well, that's what it says. Maybe that's why communications wasn't in a hurry to shoot it through. Well, maybe they put it through at all. Go on, Hap. Why does Dr. Loring think we'd be interested? Well, the exact location of the Black Star has never been determined. Research leads me to believe that the wreckage, now nearly nine centuries old, would yield valuable scientific information. Knowing you to be a man of wide interests and considerable influence, Commander, I take the liberty of asking the aid of the Space Patrol in locating the wreckage of the ill-fated Black Star. Respectfully, Dr. T. Loring. Mm. All right, Hap. Have one of the secretaries send a reply and refer Dr. Loring to the Exploration Section, United Planets Historical Division on Terra. Yes, Commander. Oh, and thank Dr. Loring for his interest. When you take care of that, we'll get to work checking those leads on Baccarati. In another part of Lowell City, in an expensively furnished apartment, Prince Baccarati removes a pair of dark glasses and then takes from his head a plastic skull piece, craftily covered to resemble a surgical dressing. He turns as the door opens behind him. Behind it. Yes, Rick, what is it? You've been out again. Well, what about it? No one who recognized me was the bandage and the dark glasses. Well, uh, I guess you're right. Naturally. I am never wrong. Well, what do you want, Frank? I've got a deal. You need some ready cash, right? And with the space patrol on the alert, you can't contact your agent. Yes, yes, yes. Get to the point. How'd you like to get your hands on thousands of credits worth of gold and precious mm -hmm. stones? Stuff we can melt down and break up and dispose of without attracting suspicion. At this point, Strack, we can deal with any outsiders. The universe is full of petty crooks who would turn me in just to collect a reward. This is different, Your Highness. There are no other crooks involved. And this loot will never be reported as stolen. No? Why not? Because it was lost 870 years ago when a spaceship crashed somewhere here on Mars. What nonsense is this? It isn't nonsense, boss. It's the truth. Centuries ago, this ship crashed with all that treasure aboard. Space travel wasn't very far advanced in those days. Neither was interplanetary communication. Yes, yes, I know all that. I don't need history lessons from you. I know, Your Highness, but this particular incident isn't in the regular history book. It's buried in the archives, and the only person living today who knows about that valuable wreck is a scientist named Dr. Loring. Ah. And how do you happen to know that? Because just by accident, I met this Dr. Loring. Loring was trying to get somebody to back an expedition to search for the wreck. But nobody's interested. Nobody's interested in finding a treasure? Yeah, the doc's going to universities, government agencies. These outfits aren't concerned about adventures for profit. Well, what about private interests? 
Haven't they been approached? Look, Doc Loring doesn't know how to approach anything but a library. That's why this deal will be a cinch. I can introduce you as a, as a philanthropist, eager to advance science. You supply the ship, the doc points out the place where the ship crashed, and you haul away the treasure. Mm. I'd like to talk to this Dr. Loring. Leave it to me, Your Highness. I'll have Loring here in 20 minutes. The next morning at Lowell City Space Patrol headquarters, Buzz and Happy check through the reports of agents. <sighs> Nothing new, sir. No sign of Baccarati. I'm beginning to think Lieutenant Norton was wrong. Baccarati can't be in Lowell City. No, I'll get it, huh? Corey here. Who? Oh, I'm very busy, Sergeant. I can't see anybody now. Well, all right, but it'll have to be brief. Send the doctor in. It's Dr. Loring. Loring? Remember the message on the 870-year-old wreck? Oh, the Black Star. Mm -hmm. Dr. Loring wants to thank me for my reply. Hmm. Probably some poor old bookworm of a guy who's always getting pushed around by people in authority. Commander Corey? Oh, excuse me, miss, but the commander has an appointment. Oh, but I was told he was expecting me. I'm Dr. Loring. You are Dr. Loring? <laughs> I, I had the impression that... Here are my that... credentials, Commander. Dr. Thorna Loring, assistant director of the Spalding Institute of Anthropology. Mm -hmm. You're from us? Yes. I'm here on a leave of absence from the Institute. I wanted to come up here and thank you personally for your courtesy, Commander. Well, that's kind of you, Miss uh, uh, Dr. Loring. I hope you find someone to help you. Oh, I have. That's another reason I wanted to see you. You showed such friendly interest. I thought you'd like to know that a private party is going to finance a search for the lost ship. That's fine. You'll be sure to let me know when you find the Black Star, won't you? Oh, I will, Commander. You'll be the very first... In... Commander, who is that? Who? The man in the picture. Oh, uh, that's our major headache these days, Dr. Loring. The solar system's number one criminal, Prince Baccarati. No, it can't be. Why, that's Mr. Sardani. Sardani? Yes. The man who's going to finance the search for the Black Star. He looked exactly like this picture of Baccarati. Happy, cut on that microtape of Baccarati. Yes, sir. I want you to listen to this voice recording, Dr. Loring. It's an intercepted space phone message we picked up a few weeks ago. Those are my instructions. Follow them exactly. Report back Why, to me at 15 hours universal star time on 674.8 megacycles. Where did you see this man? Here in Lowell City in his office. Where is that? Uh, I, I don't know. Sir, I was taken there by a man named Craig Strack. I was so excited I didn't pay any attention to the exact address. When do you expect to see Strack or this Sardani again? I was to meet Strack at the spaceport at 1800 hours. Mr. Sardan, you promised to have a ship ready to search for the wreckage of the Black Star. Dr. Loring, I want you to keep that appointment. But... If it really is this Prince Baccarati... If you act just as though nothing had happened, you'll be all right. I'll have agents in plain clothes at the spaceport ready to grab Strack and Baccarati. Later, in a small apartment in Lowell City, Fauna Loring studies maps of Mars, trying to keep calm under the knowledge that her innocent interest in an event of nearly nine centuries ago has involved her with the evil Prince Baccarati. Yes. Oh, Mr. Strack. Mm -hmm. Get your things together, Dr. Loring. We're leaving. But, uh, Mr. Sardani said 1800. We've got several hours yet. The plans have been changed. We're leaving right now. Oh, that's impossible. Uh, I've got a lot of things Nobody to do. Nobody but... keeps Mr. Sardani waiting. You want to locate that wrecked ship, don't you? Oh, yes. Then but... what's more important than that? Now, come on. Well, all right. Uh, you go on to the spaceport, Mr. Strack, and I'll join you in a half an hour. We're stalling, Dr. Loring. We're not going to the spaceport. We're taking a surface car out of the city. Sardania's spaceship will be waiting for us out in open country. I don't understand. Why all this mystery? There's no mystery, Dr. Loring. Mr. Sardania figures that one contact with the space patrol is enough for you to make in one day. Then he is Baccarati. Yes, and no one disappoints his highness. Now, come on, Dr. Loring. On orders from Commander Corey, Space Patrol agents maintain a constant check on private spaceships at the Lowell City spaceport. However, by 1800 hours, no one resembling Baccarati has made an appearance. Neither has Dr. Thana Loring. After relaying instructions to agents to keep a careful check of all gates, Commander Corey takes Cadet Happy to the address given him by the young scientist. Right now, they're carefully searching Dr. Loring's apartment. Well, 
There's no sign of a struggle. The place hasn't been ransacked either. Let's keep searching. Hat. Maybe we'll find a clue. Hey, wait, what's this? Hmm? Oh, that notebook? It was on the bureau. I flipped through it a moment ago, sir. No names or anything. Just some rough charts and some scientific scribbling. Hmm. Might be very important, Hat. It's full of notes in the Black Star. These sketches are mapped the various sections of Mars. Yeah, this one shows... All right, get your hands up to it fast. If you're looking for Dr. Loring, she's not in. I know that. It's that notebook I'm after. Give it here, Corey. Are you Clegg Strack? Never mind who I am. You don't hand over that book before I count three. I'm going to let loose with this blast. Prince Baccarati, using the name of Mr. Sardonyi, has offered to help Fauna Loring locate the wreckage of a spaceship that reportedly crashed on Mars... 870 years ago. When Baccarati and his accomplice, Clegg Strzok, evaded the space patrol trap at the Lowell City spaceport, Buzz and Happy rushed to Fauna Loring's apartment. While examining a notebook, Strzok surprised the space patrollers and is threatening now to use a blast gun on them unless Buzz hands over the scientist's notebook. You heard me, Corey. Hand it over. I'm going to start counting. One. How do we know you won't blast us anyway? Two. Two. This is your last chance, Corey. Give me that notebook. Space Patrol knows I'm here, Strack. That may be headquarters checking now. Let them buzz. Suit yourself. If nobody answers, they'll know there's trouble, and you won't stand a chance of getting away. Well, all right, Corey, answer it. No, wait. I don't trust you. So that you answer it. Tell them everything's all right, understand? Sure. Remember, one word to tip them off, and you get this. Hello? Oh, Strack, it's for you. For me? You're crazy. You wouldn't... Baccarati, something's going on. Give me that. Sure. Uh, drop that blaster, Strack. Uh, I've got it, Commander. On your feet, Strack. Keep them covered, Hap. Yes, sir. Who was that on the phone, Hap? Baccarati? Well, I don't know, sir. When I said hello, somebody mumbled, excuse me, like they got the wrong number and clicked off. I just took a chance of confusing this big moose. Pretty smart, aren't you, Cadet? Well, I've got the blast gun. Yeah. And Baccarati's got Donna Loring. And if I'm not back with this notebook in one hour, Baccarati will take the lady scientist with him. What good will that to him? He knows you won't send a ship after him with Dr. Loring being held as hostage. He'd do away with her if you did. Just why is Baccarati so anxious to find the Black Star? The girl says there's gold and jewels aboard. And she can't locate the ship without this notebook. Huh? That's what she says. She may be stalling. And if she is, the prince will find a way to make her talk. And if Baccarati finds the wreck, he'll turn Dr. Loring loose unharmed. Let's put it this way. Keep me here and it'll be plenty rough on the girl. Let me go and she might be allowed to go free. All right, Strack. There's nothing I can do. Here's the notebook. Thanks. And remember, it might be a good idea to keep all your Martian patrol ships grounded for a few days. If Baccarati sees any of them scouting around, he just might jump to the conclusion they're looking for him. And that wouldn't be so good for Donna Loring. So long, Commander. An hour later, a surface car turns off the highway leading from Lowell City and bounces over rough ground to where a small private space cruiser waits in a deep ravine. Clegg Strack leaps from the surface car, boards the spaceship, and a moment later blasts into the Martian sky. <laughs> I threw a good scare into Corey, Your Highness. I don't think he'll interfere with that treasure. Let's not waste any time. Give the girl the notebook. Yes, yeah, sister. Now tell us where the Black Star is. It may take some time. You told me it was in Sector 8M. But a sector is a lot of territory, especially on the equator. I told you had it all figured out. Please, if you'll only listen, I have it figured out in theory. Now try to understand. When the Black Star crashed, Mars wasn't thoroughly charted. That was 870 years ago, remember? Yes, yes, I know all that. Just so you're sure there was treasure aboard the Black Star. There was. The problem now is to relate ancient, incomplete data and descriptions of terrain to present-day maps. That's why I needed this notebook. Then get busy. If we find the Black Star, I'll release you. But I won't put up with any foolishness. You understand? Meantime, far above the surface of the planet Mars, Commander Corey is at the controls of the Terra 5 as Cadet Happy scans the surface with a sensitive view scope. 
The western border of Section 9M is below us now, sir. In a few seconds, we'll be over 8M. We're far enough away from Mars so that no ship near the surface could identify us. Yeah, but at the same time, we can't identify Baccarati. No, but if the ship is spaceborne, we'll see it. And if the maneuvers over at Section 8M, we can be pretty sure it's Baccarati. Well, then the wreck is somewhere in 8M. I didn't have much chance to examine Tana Loring's notebook, but there was a circle drawn in a chart marked Sector 8M. Oh, Commander, I've got something in the viewscope. Heading 38 degrees, very low velocity. I'd say about 10 DUs per hour relative to Mars surface. It sure isn't a ship heading for any of the settlements. I'd say we've spotted Baccarati. Yes, sir. And if he lands, we'll know it's him. That's when our job really begins to happen. We'll have to land far enough away to keep him from seeing or hearing our ship. That ship has changed vector again, sir. I think they're getting ready to land. We're going to have to move fast, Hap. If I know Baccarati, after he gets his hands on that treasure, Thana Loring's life won't be worth a single space credit. Here and there, along the equator of Mars, are clusters of vegetation. On a barren knoll near one of these clusters is the wreckage of a spaceship. In eight centuries, even the thin, dry Martian atmosphere has worked the camouflage of erosion, blending the dull metal with the rocky soil. In contrast, the newly landed space cruiser gleams brightly at the base of the knoll as two men and a girl make their way up to the long, forgotten ruin. The black star. Just as you said, Miss Loring. No wonder it was never found. Well, you practically have to be on top of it to see it. Yes. And yeah, now to find the treasure. Hey, Dr. Loring, will you hurry? Uh, I beg your pardon? Into the ship. Oh, I was counting those little piles of stone around the crest of the knoll. I'm more interested in the little piles of precious stones we find inside the ship. Forget those rocks. But don't you realize what they are? There were 20 living human beings aboard the Black Star when it crashed here nearly nine centuries ago. Eighteen survived the crash. Think of it, Prince Baccarati. Eighteen men and women stranded on a deserted planet waiting for rescue. And one by one they passed away and their comrades marked their... Uh, I have no time for sentimental nonsense. Let's search the wreckage. Carefully, Prince Baccarati, Sprack, and Dr. Loring examined the Black Star compartment by compartment. Finally, every inch of the ancient hulk has been gone over. And the three explorers emerge into the sunlight, empty-handed. Dr. Loring, uh, you told me there was treasure aboard this wreck. There was, when it blasted off from Earth. Then where is it? The Hulk has been stripped. There is nothing of value anywhere here. Oh, I don't understand it. It should be here. And just what was supposed to be aboard this ship? Relics from a museum on Earth. Gold, silver, jewels, native implements of primitive civilization. What was that stuff doing on the spaceship back in those days? Were they taking it to a museum here on Mars? No. The Black Star was a, well, a pirate ship, I guess you'd call it. Evidently, the purpose of the crew was to melt down the gold and silver, work over the gems, and then return to Earth and dispose of them. Dr. Loring, you say the crew of the Black Star were space pirates? Men and women, too? Yes. Wait a minute. This track. Put yourself in the place of those pirates. If you were stranded with stolen treasure, what would you do? I don't know. I'd bury the treasure and hope for rescue. Sure. Sure, then you'd come back later and get the treasure. Exactly. But these pirates weren't rescued. The treasure is hidden somewhere near here. Your Highness, you're a genius. This explains everything. Come on. We'll go over every foot of this ground till we find the treasure. Far away from the wrecked Black Star, the Terra 5 lands on the surface of Mars. The cargo hold opens, and down the ramp glides a compact scout tank designed for swift travel over rough terrain. Seeking low ground, the tank winds its way among the sprawling Martian hills, plows through shallow ravines and rocky passes. Then, a mile from the Black Star, the tank grinds to a stop, and Buzz and Happy get out. Carefully, they make their way on foot toward the knoll where the Black Star lies, circled by small, neat piles of stones. Oh, what a desolate place. Think of those poor people in the Black Star, waiting for help that never came. Unfortunately, tragedies like that seldom happen today. But at that time, happy look. Hmm? Smoke and rockets, what is it? It's a mask of some kind. A primitive mask. What's it doing here? Smacking the Martian wilderness. It's a weird-looking thing. Looks like a, like a war mask of some savage tribe. But there aren't any primitive people in Mars. <laughs> hey, it's sure heavy. It's metal. Yes, yeah, gold and silver studded with jewels. What a frightening face. Centuries ago, some primitive races on Earth used to wear masks like that. Still not quite like them. Put it down, Hap. Maybe Dr. Loring can identify it for us after we rescue her. Yes, sir. 
Well, it seems to be staring at us with those big eyes. I sure hate to run into that thing in the dark. It's very strange, huh? As you say, there are no primitive races on Mars, yet, yet somehow that mask seems to belong here. It does for a fact. Look at it glaring at us like we were intruders. Don't forget it, Hap. We've got a job to do. I see them, Hap. They're behind that mound of rocks at the foot of the knoll. I hope Baccarotti doesn't see us until we're close enough to rush them. Yeah, we don't dare fire at them. We might hit the girl. Don't forget that they're having seen us. Smoke and rockets were right out in the open, and Baccarotti's using a blaster. Hap, if we try moving forward, they'll get us. There's a gully over there that curves around behind that wall of stones. Say, if we could slip into that, we could surprise them. Both of us couldn't surprise them, but one of us could. If the other stays here to draw their fire. <laughs> Hap, take my blaster. Fire over their heads. Just often enough to keep them interested. I'll work my way down the gully. But, Commander, we start firing. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> What got in it, Corey? Doesn't he know the girl's here with us? He's firing over our heads. Try to scare us. Why don't you surrender? It's hopeless. Hopeless, is it? We're protected by this stone wall. The instant they show themselves, we can pick them off. I don't like this, Your Highness. They seem to be more anxious to capture you than to rescue the girl. Ah, nonsense. It's one of Corey's buffs. But I'll fool him. Uh, you keep Dr. Loring here with you. I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going? You set a threat for Corey. Keep firing. I saw where that shot came from. I'll get one of them this time. No, don't. Get away or you'll oh. get hurt. No, you don't strike. Corey. A lighter strike unless you want more. Are you all right, Miss Loring? Yes, Commander. Where's Baccarati? I don't know. He slipped away a minute ago in that direction. Commander, Commander, is everything okay? Guard strike, Kathy. I'm going to look for Baccarati. Oh, yes, sir. Commander, what's that? Spaceship blasting off. Baccarati. Oh, gone it. He got away. So he sneaked off to the ship, the yellow rat. Look who's talking. On your feet, Strack. Commander, you know, I never expected to get out of here alive. You've had quite an ordeal, Dr. Loring. Do you feel up to a hike of a mile or so to our scout tank? Oh, of course. I feel fine. We've got something real interesting to show you. It's a primitive mask. Real weird looking. Why, it must be part of the cargo of the Black Star. You know, there were a lot of museum pieces aboard. Oh, sure. That explains it. By the way, Dr. Loring, how many people were aboard when it crashed? Twenty. Twelve men and eight women. When last heard from, eighteen were still alive. Oh, then those little piles of stones up on the hill, that's where they... Yes, those are the grave markers. Even though it happened centuries ago, it's sad to think of those poor people. Seeing their number grow fewer and fewer. Twenty people alone on a strange planet. And now... Just 20 little piles of stone. Oh, you tired them too. And wait. 20 people and 20 monuments. Dr. Loring, who buried the last survivor? Why, Commander, I've got to see that mask. If it didn't come from Earth, then there's a tremendous mystery here on Mars. You'll take the mask with us if you like. But right now, I'm interested in only one thing, capturing Prince Baccarati. Have grab strike and let's go. Yes, sir. You know, for some reason, it's suddenly awful chilly here. Join us again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, directed by Larry Robertson, Dick Kufel speaking. Join us again next week. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. <laughs>